Hey, ESPN, I'm Jack. I'm the co-founder of Crack.com. And I'm Miles, a former lobbyist that loves soccer and gets very nervous when I'm pulled over by the police. And we're the hosts of The Daily Zeitgeist, a daily comedic news podcast that covers politics, pop culture, and we're both big sports fans. I'm actually named after my grandfather, legendary NBA coach Dr. Jack Ramsey. Oh, well, I'm named after Miles Davis, a legendary heroin addict who is not my grandfather. It's not a competition. So search The Daily Zeitgeist on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever fine podcasts are given away for free. And now, Jalen and Jacoby on ESPN Radio. When I pop the trunk, head to the dirt. Y'all pop the trunk, I pop the hood. Now act stupid, I'll pop the trunk. Now give me your po-po, po-po. Here's Jalen Rose. What up, Dow? I'm David Jacoby. And on the cool check-in. Center stage on the mic. And we putting it on wax. We're Jalen and Jacoby. What do we do? Get to find an individual that has supported this program six years, exactly what they want, when they want it, when they need it. Whether podcast, radio, television at 2 a.m. or 2 p.m. It's been a long time since we gave you a dope pod to step to. We had to do the Fantasy Football Marathon. We put that out as a podcast. And also today, we always exclude, we always record exclusive content for our podcast listeners. Today's going to be a little shorter than normal. Do you know why, Jalen Rose? The control room was on fire. The control room was on fire. <laughs> we don't need no water. <laughs> the control room was on fire. Oh, I've been sitting here in the studio. I hear a bunch of commotion in there. And all of a sudden, they're like, the control room is smoking. First of all, I thought someone on the staff was using some medicinal. I'm, I can't lie. That was, about, that was the first response i was like i'm surprised it's not smoking in there and then they're like no 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 no. it's not that it's not that all i know is this for our staff that counts as a failed drug test that does, that does get for our studio our control room our control room needs to be drug tested we need to drug test those servers back there but as we always do we're going to give you some exclusive content and there's something that i want to discuss here in the podcast space it's a little a little dicey for the television space. You know, the executives don't listen to our podcast. They might watch the TV show. They definitely, definitely don't listen to the podcast. So there's this. The Ezekiel Elliott case. There's, okay. We obviously know there's a suspension. And then there's been, there's been an appeal by Ezekiel Elliott. That appeal will be heard. And then there's been some news leaks. Some news leaks of various different things that seem to be disparaging to try to discredit the accuser. The NFL released this statement. This is a statement from Joe Lockhart, Executive Vice President of Communications. Quote, over the past few days, we've received multiple reports of the NFLPA spreading derogatory information to the media about the victim in the Ezekiel Elliott discipline case. It is a common tactic to attempt to prove the innocence of the accused by discrediting the victim. In this case, Mrs. Thompson, Ms. Thompson. When coming forward to report such abuse, common or not, these tactics are shameful Efforts to shame and blame victims are often what prevent people from coming forward in the first place to report violence and or seek help in the first place. This is an interesting, interesting thing that is happening. And one thing that needs to be made very clear is whatever you say about this person, whatever text messages she sent, we all read the text messages. It does not in any way, shape or form change the fact that he may or may not have assaulted her. Like, it really doesn't matter in this point. That's where I was going. And this story is like holding a loaded 12 gauge because... Don't get fired. There's so many different ways to unload. Here's where I want to start. Where the NFL ended as it related to that statement and how you began this segment. I was watching First Take today and... Actually, wifey Molly Karam said something that made me think. In looking at Ezekiel's statement, he never mentioned the fact that I did not and would not commit domestic violence against a woman. Mm. And I looked at it again. I was like, that makes a lot of sense. So am I going to forgive the fact that she sent some texts that ultimately were lies to friends to cover up certain situations or to help aid a lie that she was trying to promote? 
Or it's also like she was apparently trying to blackmail him and the sex tape was involved. And here's my thing. is like this woman can spend six days a week just drowning kittens constantly and then rest for the last day. But that does not change whether or not she may be the victim of an, an assault at the hands of Ezekiel Elliott. Like, like disparaging the victim does, does absolutely nothing to change the fact that she may have been assaulted by this man. Now, I do have to acknowledge that on both sides, male and female, there are people that mean you harm, that you're in relationships mm-hmm. with. And that's why they call it pillow talk, because you say things that you think are happening in private, that ultimately, if that person gets upset with you, they share it publicly. And each couple out there understands. Anybody that's been in a relationship knows this. The first thing you do when you get into a disagreement with your significant other, say the meanest things possible. That's not how I get down, Jalen. I'll, I'll, I, I won't be here the next day if that's, if with, that's what I did. No question about it. And or no. with family members or friends. The people that are this closest to you are the people that can hurt you the most. That's absolutely. how it Absolutely. And so with that being said, I will not forgive in any way, shape, or form the fact that she allegedly was trying to do what she could to disparage his name and or lie on him whether via text, regardless to her friends, in interviews to the police or whatever. But what you're saying has to be accurate. And whatever she was ultimately doing, we can't overlook the fact that possibly she was a victim of domestic abuse. And looking deeper into those scenarios, in, in a relationship, It's unfortunate for the last 12 months that she's publicly had to endure the story being played out for public consumption Mm -hmm. because every time his name gets mentioned, it is talking about her. But the resolution, ultimately, I have to say this, and the punishment, it ain't life or death for him, everybody. Hey, Cowboy fans, he going into his second season. He's only missing six games. You know what's going to happen when he gets back to playing football? And this is a function of society, not necessarily a function of him, because he should be allowed to have a livelihood, whether he gets suspended for six six weeks, whether he gets suspended for a year, whether he gets suspended for two years. Since he is really good at football, there still will be people, when he returns, wearing his jerseys, rooting for him, and... The longer he plays, they're going to be remembering him for more than what he does on the field, than off the field. And that's something we need to look ourselves in the mirror about. When Tyreek Hill, who we know about the scenarios he got himself into Mm -hmm. domestic, with domestic violence, yet on this program we were talking about he was the lead person on NFL.com's Twitter account. Mm -hmm. So... It's a twisted story. It's truly unfortunate. Two young people in a relationship, and it obviously went sour, of course, to say and, the least. And we do not know what happened, but we do we do know what he has been accused of, and we do know that we will continue to hear more and more about it. I want to change into something a little lighter. LeBron James is he's getting a little extra on social media lately. You know, he's he's just letting us in a little bit more. And someone tweeted that. Uh, that if the lady that you are dating uses angel hair noodle, noodles for her spaghetti, then you have to leave her house immediately. LeBron James saw this tweet what? and decided to respond ASAP, way too soupy if you use those noodles, no substance at all. Where do you stand on angel, ha- angel hair noodle debate? I stand on hit the brakes. Okay. I'm glad we going here. I used to talk about this a lot. <laughs> angel hair noodle? I used to always talk about the fact that Sometimes our public figures give us advice that they don't follow. Mm -hmm. I remember Ice Cube had a song that wasn't the most positive thing to say about women growing up. And one of our friends was singing it. And they felt that that's truly how he got down. I was like, let me tell you something. Ice Cube was happily married. He has kids. And like all successful relationships, his wife runs the household. Of course. Okay, when Beyonce is talking about Jay-Z on her Lemonade album, everybody jumps up. Oh, she about to leave him. I told you, girl. 
that's Becky with the good hair and all of that. All I know is they three kids in. Exactly. And so while you get, while it may feel good to get a reply from LeBron, do not mess up your relationship exactly. because of his Angel advice. Angel hair pasta, no. ties, no. farfanelli, no. whatever, macaroni, <laughs> no. whatever it is. If someone's trying to cook for you, it doesn't have to taste good. It's a thought that counts. <laughs> it's a thought that counts. Angel hair pasta, regular spaghetti, whatever. Thanks so much for sticking with us. The control room definitely just failed a drug test, I heard. It was smoking all during this shoot. We'll be back tomorrow to get the I know what why. They want. It's official. Reggie Noble is on the board. That's right. Our producer is actually Reggie Noble. We just call him Reggie because we want to keep a low profile. Let's get it. Blue Moon is brewed with Valencia orange peel and a touch of coriander. It's a creative twist on a Belgian-style wheat ale for a taste that shines brighter. Taste responsibly. Blue Moon Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. To everyone else, it's breaking news. To Jalen and Jacoby listeners, it's broken Respected news. veteran NBA reporter <laughs> Chris Sheridan tweeted today, quote, NBA source said today, this will be LeBron's final season in Cleveland. He is 100% leaving relationship with owners beyond repair. I guess LeBron's leaving Cleveland. Well, the reason why it's broken news to the people that follow this fine program is while Chris Sheridan is respected. Very. Is responsible Very. and disciplined. Mature. I'm not. You're not at all. So, you do so say when stuff. I said it on first take, <laughs> he reported when I said it on ago. this show, <laughs> it doesn't make the news. It doesn't, it's not a big deal. I guess I'm not revealing my sources. I'm not on the bottom of the ticker. But there's one thing that I do find interesting. One detail I find interesting about this is it says that he is 100% leaving because I always said this. I always said LeBron James doesn't know what LeBron James is going to do. LeBron James is going to play this season with the Cleveland Cavaliers and then make his decision. Do you think this is a done deal? He's already decided to leave Cleveland. I think it's a done deal because he delivered. Just think about it like this. When LeBron James decided to leave Cleveland initially, the letter Dan Gilbert wrote to the fans and for the public, that was something that was truly never forgiven. Mm. It was an ultimate sign of maturity. And the fact that he truly wanted to leave the Miami Heat after looking in the rearview mirror at Dwayne Wade and Chris Bosh, looking at the windshield like, hmm, they have Kyrie. I could get Kevin Love. Yeah, I could get, Didn't even a, put Wiggins in the Kyrie letter. If I play Kyrie and Love, I can get past that letter. You know, No question <laughs> yeah. about it. And I get to play at home. Mm, I think I can good. find a way. To bring a chip to the land. Which he did. And so he delivered that. So the local businesses, the basketball team, anybody in earshot of being able to benefit from what it takes having LeBron James as a superstar player in your hometown has been elevated. So now when he bounces, y'all can burn whatever jerseys y'all want. Exactly. Y'all can say whatever y'all want. I did what I said I was going to do. Put my jersey in the rafters. Put me a statue in front of the building, but man, I got a lot of other interests. I have a lot of other options. My youngster, Kyrie, has already decided to take his situation in his own hands yep. and say he wanted to be out of there, so I'm 100% out of here. It just seems like Kevin Love and Tristan Thompson are going to be starting next season. Like, um, what happened to this championship contending <laughs> team that we were on for four years in a row? But they're going to be looking at their bank accounts on the 1st and 15th. <laughs> Not going to be complaining too much about that. Not any complaints at all. I can imagine. Well, Kyrie, as you said, has demanded a trade. And there are some reports that if he was traded to the Spurs, that he would sign yep. an extension. Spurs? With the yep. Spurs. What do you make of that news? Here's the thing. We talk about former super teams. Mm -hmm. I remember being in the building. Western Conference Finals. Game one. And the Golden State Warriors, they legitimately have four All-Stars. The San Antonio Spurs had one. Yep. Kawhi Leonard. Yep. And I looked up at the scoreboard, they was up 25. Yep. Were they going to win that series? No. No. Has Zaza Pachulia not intentionally injured them? Would they have won that game? Yes. Yes. Now, how many games did they lose the entire playoffs last year? One game. Okay. So... If somebody's able to team up with Kawhi Leonard, 
who and Greg Popovich literally has established himself as one of the top players in the games on both ends of the floor. A championship pedigree that they've already put together in San Antonio. That becomes something super special. And Kyrie has had some huge games against their squad. He has in San Antonio. Yeah. He's had some big games. I think 65, if I remember correctly, from a few years ago. And it is interesting. It's like this, the Spurs, he said he wouldn't sign an extension, but the Spurs are one team that's, they're just stable, stability. And that's something that I think that Kyrie would appreciate. And that would be quite a force in the Western Conference as it just keeps getting stronger and stronger. There are some rumors that the Knicks are interested in trading for Kyrie. The Cavs want Chris Tapp's Porzingis back in any deal for Kyrie. The Knicks saying we would not do that. If you were the Knicks, would you give up Porzingis for Kyrie? I would not. Kyrie's a terrific scoring guard. He can get his buckets with the best of them in the game. If and when he leads the Cleveland Cavaliers, he's going to consistently be amongst the league leaders in scoring. He's virtually shown that once the big stage happens, the playoffs and the NBA finals, he could be undeniably a go-to guy and a closer. Yeah. We saw this happen. Can't take anything away from his game. As the lead ball handler on a squad, the level of elevation that now needs to occur for his game is to make guys around him better. Yeah. When that 20 to 25 points can also become 10 to 12 assists. And so with that, it, if you're New York, you want to bring him on, but play with Porzingis. Exactly. I'm not going to give up my seven-foot unicorn who the game now is trending toward players like that. Look at the Greek freak in Milwaukee and an abundance of players that are basically six, eight and above. LeBron, Kawhi, as we mentioned, KD. Mm-hmm. You need players that are multifaceted up front. Yeah. And so you don't give up on Porzingis' potential as a three-point shooter, a guy that's shown you he has toughness, can block shots. He's going to continue to improve for Kyrie Irving at their point at this point of both of their careers. And if you trade Porzingis for Kyrie, what do you end up with? You have, you're going to trade Melo, lose Melo. You've got Kyrie Irving and like Willie Hernan Gomez and Ron Baker and Tim Hardaway Jr. Like that doesn't necessarily make you a better player. It might not even get you into the playoffs in the Eastern Conference. And after one thing about Kyrie and saying that he would sign an extension with the Spurs, if he has a bad time on a team that gives up assets to bring him in, he can bounce in a couple years too. Blue Moon is brewed with Valencia orange peel and a touch of coriander. It's a creative twist on a Belgian-style wheat ale for a taste that shines brighter. Taste responsibly. Blue Moon Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. Jalen Rose, LeBron James took a private jet from Akron to New York City to play in this pickup game. Him, Carmelo, J.R. Smith, and Kevin Durant all got together in a New York City gym to play pickup. Enos Cantor was also involved. How surprised do you think you were when Enos Cantor got the invite? Meet some big guys. Who in town? Any big guy? The, I think they just, NBA big fella in town? They just, Come on, big fella. They just invited him because he doesn't play defense. That's all it is. <laughs> They're like, oh, if we'll, bring, if we'll bring Enos in. He won't play any defense. We'll get our buckets. Also, you watch the video. There are no buckets by Enos Cantor or J.R. Smith. It's all LeBron, Carmelo, and KD. I feel like when J.R. and Enos Cantor watch this video, they're like, I had buckets. How mad do you think they are? Don't sleep on en- Enos Cantor Gets ending buckets. up staying in New York City to play for that team. Ooh, that's interesting. Just put a little package together. And my main takeaway from this video is this. Why is Carmelo trying to play basketball with a hoodie on? Like, why is he still <laughs> doing this? He's been doing this all summer. He spent all summer wearing a hoodie playing basketball. What is happening? It's just a, a trend that he's rocking right now. Mm-hmm. Just like we discussed on this show, LeBron James needs to petition the NBA so he can rock a do-rag during the game. NBA licensed do-rag, a do-rag with a little NBA patch logo on it right there would be great. (laughs) The Nevada State Athletic Commission has approved eight-ounce gloves for the Mayweather-McGregor fight. (laughs) What does that mean? Floyd might get his signature KO like I've been discussing. He's going to be a little bit faster. He's going to have the opportunity to hit a guy that is in his first professional boxing match. While I do have a lot of respect for Conor McGregor, 
Terrific piece, actually, on him in the current ESPN the magazine. Shot to right, Thompson. I am not in any way, shape, or form taken away from what he's accomplished, but that's in the octagon. And fighting in the square circle against Floyd Mayweather, it don't matter if they're playing with – it don't matter if they fight with balloons on their hands. <laughs> okay. He's going to have almost a no chance to hit Floyd flush with punches, and Floyd may have the opportunity to have that signature knockout in his 50th win. See, everyone's talking about the weight of the gloves today, but they're missing the real story about this. Is Floyd Mayweather says that he abstains from sex before big fights, and he will do so before this fight. However, Conor McGregor 2015 says he has as much sex as possible, <laughs> which is the right approach before a big fight. But this is a lesson for all athletes out there. There's a reason why prize fighters, when they're in their ultimate training phase, decide for whatever reasons, Sex is not something they should engage in. Mm -hmm. So for Conor McGregor, I mean, he in a combat sport. He I mean, does yeah. a lot of grappling, yeah, 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 do a lot yeah. of wrestling. He was practicing <laughs> for his situation, different positionings and body movements and stuff like that. For Floyd, you need to stand up right. You know what I'm saying? So it only oh, makes you're sense. Funny. You're funny. <laughs> so the Atlanta Falcons are going to unveil this brand new fancy stadium. It's going to be the, the best thing that downtown Atlanta has ever seen. And it's also going to have a Chick-fil-A in it. However, small detail, Chick-fil-A closed on Sundays. So seven out of the eight games, they will not even be able to have Chick-fil-A. Should Chick-fil-A as a company make an exception for this one particular instance? Not at all. The beliefs that keep Chick-fil-A restaurants closed on Sundays were things that they were hounded about initially when they were talking about being in a position to be a successful chain of restaurants. They endured that. They didn't change their stance. And now, look, they're one of the most popular chains and delicious ones we have going. And it just shows how much the Atlanta Falcons and or the Mercedes Dome, as they're possibly going to call it, that's what it's wants called. to be in business with them if they can't use them seven out of eight weeks. I know. I mean, I'm sure other events they can use them. Can I, can I make a confession on Wax now? I've only had Chick-fil-A like two or three times in my whole entire life. It's just not really on my radar as a fast food restaurant that I go to. It's just not something I do. I apologize. I'm sure it makes a lot of people not like me. I know it makes a lot of people upset. And when I did have it, I was a little underwhelmed. That didn't live up to the hype. That's just something I, I'm going to say. I it's am not I'm mad say. at the grilled chicken in any way, shape, or form, but it's no Waffle House. No. They need to yeah. have one of those inside. They, 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 I mean, I'm assuming the they have a Waffle House. I'm assuming they have a Waffle House. I mean, that's just that just has to happen. I would be very disappointed in the A town if there is no Waffle House I in know. the new dome. And finally, TMZ has spotted Blake Griffin and Kendall Jenner together twice in the last week. Do you have any advice for Blake? I got one quick question. How much did he just sign for? I don't know. $100 million, something like that. $140 million. Okay, so this happened after he signed his major deal. Run! 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 Jalen Rose, we're watching videos of Kevin Durant, Carmelo Anthony, and LeBron James play. There's all these videos of all these different NBA athletes working out. What is Dame Lillard doing? Reportedly working 12 hours a day on his new album. Is that, too, is that too much time a day to be spending on your new album? It's not. And I give Dame a lot of credit because I criticize athletes a lot for being whack as MCs. Mm -hmm. He actually He's had a good. really nice album, and he really be flowing. He's pretty so good. So I support his musical endeavors. And also, you can record for 12 hours a day. He's but he's still around. working out. Yeah, he's, he's still working on his game. Yeah, he's just watching Jalen and Jacoby. He's sitting in there watching no TV, just waiting to get inspired. He's not, it's, not like, it's not like working at a factory for 12 hours. You know what I mean? You're just sitting around the studio for 12 hours, racking up that studio time bill. Hey, Dame Dollar, we need you to do a freestyle or something and give us an intro for our show. We know we come on at 2 in the morning, but we did affectionately call you and CJ Mama's boys. I'm just saying. Holla at your boy. You know Detroit just like Oakland. And then we have this. While Dame Dollar's working on his album, Paul George and Russell Westbrook are working out together. They were in Los Angeles working out at UCLA together, building chemistry as they will face this season on the Thunder. My question for you, Jalen Rose, is, is it more likely they will play the season after this together on the Thunder or the Lakers? 
On the Thunder, I think once you win MVP the way Russell Westbrook did for a team that already lost a previous MVP in KD and an MVP runner-up in James Harden, he's seen all of that transpire. And I think he understands the magnitude of building a legacy where he is. And now the organization went out and got him another top-tier player to run with in Paul George, who I think second year after his horrific leg injury is really going to play outstanding basketball. Having those two players in tow, Boogie, what up, though? You want to start another big-time superstar-driven team? I love this. Go run with those guys. I love this. I it's love right DeMarcus there. Cousins on the Thunder. No I love question. It. You can they have got Adams, the you can have front. Cantor, you can have Cal Singler, whatever, whatever you need. Whatever you need. No doubt. And so I like what they're doing there. I think those two gentlemen are going to play a long time together. You know, they may not be the best duo no. in the game, no. but I would not be surprised if they're the most explosive and most dynamic this season and for years to come. And I think a lot of people sleep on what Paul George does in the defensive end as well. It really shores up that defense with him and Roberson. He's got a couple of really good defenders for the other side of the floor. There's some interesting news that came out. The Bulls are reportedly going to come to a buyout agreement with Dwayne Wade. This is the weird part. In the next few months, I guess, what does this mean to you? I'm going to tell you what it means. I was working the NBA draft. And I saw the Chicago Bulls trade a player to the Golden State Warriors, who's actually going to be a nice young prospect, for $3 million. (laughs) I went on air right then and told everyone that's exactly how much it costs to buy out Rajon Rondo. (laughs) So what's happening here is, for public consumption, they letting D-Wade know you're going to have to take a haircut. Yeah, you know, we're not paying you the full salary. No doubt about it. full salary. No question about it. But, again... I like to leverage for both sides in this situation. Obviously, Dwayne Wade, a future Hall of Famer, a three-time champion, has made quite a coin playing basketball. Clearly, without Jimmy Butler, he's not trying to be a part of a rebuilding situation. Mm. So I do see this being able to take place. But as the Bulls are doing now, they're putting it out there that like, we ain't taking a big-time discount. No, no. It, I think it'll take a few months because that's how long the negotiation is going to take. And then you're going to see this thing, which I think, just like you, they should change the rules. He'll end up signing a veteran minimum contract somewhere else and making him run into championship. It's They really need to change this. How do you suggest that they fix this? I haven't been a fan of the late season buyouts in the NBA because I think it skews the balance of power that late in the year. Mm -hmm. And that's truly unfortunate from a competitive standpoint. I just never liked that as a player. And now as somebody that works in the media, we see multiple teams be able to do that. The Boston Celtics initially come to mind when they were able to do it years ago. You have the Cavs last year. They added Bogut and Williams. Absolutely. So, again, four-way at this point is all about playing in a contending situation. So don't be surprised if that happens. We're going to move to Derek Carr. Derek Carr, quarterback of the Raiders, released a teaser video teasing, like Dame Dalla, his musical career. But then he said it was all just a joke because he doesn't even own that jacket. He was wearing a light (laughs) jean jacket and jean pants. Soft move or boss move denouncing the Canadian tuxedo? Boss move. Really? Really? Absolutely. You know where he plays? In Oakland? No question about it. And you think the black hole want to see their QV on the center looking like he about to put out a pop album? As <laughs> soon as he throws an interception. He looks like he's wearing eye makeup, like mascara or no something. No doubt. Soon as he put out, soon as he throw an interception, it'll be all over him and the team leaving to go to Vegas? We have big news. Kawhi Leonard smiled. (laughs) Two Chains posted a picture of himself with Kawhi Leonard. Kawhi Leonard actually smiled. Does this disprove my theory that Kawhi Leonard is just a basketball robot? It does, and it should also dispute, disprove your theory of how players shouldn't rock their own gear because he's doing that in that picture with his hat and his shirt. It just feels weird when you're wearing your own gear. It feels weird to me. You got your own logo, it's got your name on it. It's just kind of odd. Can we just talk about one thing for a second? These new Yeezy Boost runner sneaker things that came out, 
These shoes are absolute trash. And I just feel like the hype and the actual shoe doesn't live up to it. Like, these are now going for $800 on eBay. They look like Payless walking doctor shoes. I don't know what they are. Do you like these new Yeezy sneakers? No. What I learned is the consumer dictates that ultimately. There are actually individuals out here willing to pay that. But just because so, Kanye West is involved. Correct. And so because of that, this is why I tried to tell people to pump the brakes on what they were saying about the big baller brand. Because you set a price point, people find a way to purchase it if they really want it. As the Kardashians, they ain't selling makeup for $500. <laughs> I got some makeup right here. I would pay five cents for it. Jalen Rose makeup. You should sell it. You know what I mean? Sell it. There you go. So, you should come up with a line of makeup, Jalen. For so real. People makeup for men. It, makeup for men. That's it. a multi-million dollar deal. Jalen <laughs> Jalen Rose makeup line for men. I'm fully on board with this. Thank you so much. Thank you for watching on ESPN Two. We'll be Thank back you. tomorrow. Subscribe to our podcast. Thank you, Jalen Jacoby. You're far too kind. <laughs>